Hey, fellow engineers, it's me, Mario. And today we're going to talk about the Lee water expansion for Barrage. Um, I was kind of requested this video by Patrick, who's a very strong Euro player. You might know him because he's, I think, number one on BGA for Great Master Trail. Uh, and he has said, well, man, you didn't make any video about uh, the deep water expansion of Barrage, did you? And I was like, no, I didn't read it. I wrote some articles on BGG, but I didn't actually make a good video about all the expansion. So today we're just going to talk about the whole expansion. There's a lot to talk about. I will try to focus on parts that are um, more interesting, more interesting, but remember that this is going to be a strategy guide so i will not like delve deep into the rules or things like that um so first off uh the lee water project can be divided into three different parts i think um the first part is the new operatives and the new nation i won't delve too deep into them um because i'm gonna make a video for netherlands since it's a nation that i've becoming to understand more and more recently and i will might make videos in the future about all the operatives but i just list the operatives here and quickly real quickly talk about them so uh, first off there are the two designers uh, one is simone luciani which unfortunately is a very bad operative it, he, he honestly sucks, which uh, is funny being the designer and all, but um, he will let you keep four contracts and he will let you fulfill more contracts with a single production action. He's really not the relevant producing for little small contracts is not economically viable in most games and having four contracts is almost a negligible bonus. Sometimes he can do something, but most of the time he will literally do nothing. The other one is Battista, Tommaso Battista, and he's one of my favorite. I don't think he's as strong as the strongest operatives, but he's pretty good. You have one special engineer, he's the architect, and you can place it on any single action space. And if you do, you can immediately take an action afterwards. He's very good for some combos, like you can have a speed and immediately build, you can have uh, drop and then immediately produce you can get a contract and immediately produce you can also take a minus two production and then uh, a normal production it's pretty good uh, I mean it's easy to see why in a game like barrage which is so competitive there's so much competition against your opponents having two actions in a row can be uncontested can be very 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 strong uh, and the other two operatives are Fouché She's got an extra worker spot on your personal board that will let you copy any action of one of your private buildings. She, I mean, her power is amazing, is incredibly strong. The thing is that most private buildings, as we're going to see, suck. So um, she's just in the middle of the pack instead of being a top-notch operative. And the last one is Leslie, which... <laughs> She's like the most broken operative of all. Um, she will, she's will. she got a special tie like um, Krylov one where you can place your mechs and take an external work without having to actually ditch the mechs. You can just place them on your wheel and when you get back the Leslie tile you will also get back the mechs. It's, it's like incredibly good, incredibly broken. She's just like heads and shoulder above every other operative, Krylov included. I mean, Krylov can come close, but she's just better. And yeah, uh, I don't want to talk too much about her because you're gonna bet something like 10, 20, even 30 points, depending on the game. You can see her as having basically something like one, two, free max per round which is just bonkers and a free spin per round if you take this one of the strongest action on the board which is taking external work so yeah she's just very good but i'm getting ahead of myself so um what are we gonna talk about next is the general balance of the game um because the other two parts of the expansion are external works and private buildings 
And before delving deep into each category, I would like to talk about how the balance of the game changes a bit. Uh, in my opinion, with the Lee Water uh, project in the mix, you're going to find an economy richer of coins. And the game is gonna still be tight, even if you're adding some um, worker placement spots because these worker placements are going to get heavily contested in most games. So it's not that the game become loser because of that. Uh, it's just a different kind of balance. So I would say that overall with the Lee Water expansion in the mix, mechs are more important. They are already the best income you can get in the base game, uh, but oh, somebody's playing. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just took a game I'm into right now in which I'm not faring that well, but we'll see. Um, you get more coins, mechs are more important, and there are more ways to score other than production. So normally in the base game you score mostly out of production, um, contracts, and the seven point income from the structures. I, I would say that these three are the main ways to score in the game, al along with the round bonus, of course. Sometimes can be pretty strong, but I would say that these three categories make up most of the points you're gonna rack up in a game. Uh, so here you get more ways to score thanks to external works mainly, and thanks to some uh, private buildings. So let's get deep into the external works. Here you see them in all their glory. This is the A group, this is the B group, and this is the C group. So once again, how do you get external works? You just place your workers, it's always two the cost, in one of these spots and you get the relative external work. You have to ditch the max for good, you will not get them back in any way unless you're Leslie. Um, so it's pretty costly to get these works, but they are most of the time very much worth it. I can confidently say that all the A group are, all the ones in the A group are always worth it, depending on the situation, on the poor state, etc. But I would say that I expect all of them to be taken in round one and probably all of them be taken in round two too, uh, in most games. So they are really, really important. What do they do? Well, the level ones mainly uh, put coins into the system. Um, in some way it's easy to count how many of them, like for this one for example you gain three coins, you get two spins and you use up two workers, so you're also saving two coins from the two spins spot on the board, so you overall gain five coins for a single grey mech, um, which most of the time is a very 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 strong thing, uh, I mean a grey mech is important but five coins for this one is pretty important too. And for this one, you're gonna gain nine coins, so four plus the five you save from the uh, get in advanced tile uh, from the board. So it's like 4.5 coins per each uh, brown mech, which is <laughs> bonkers. And it's especially important because of the timing, because on the first round, a lot of the time you want to build bases on the red spots, or uh, you want to get actually tiles like with this action. So. I would say that gaining coins is very, very good. Uh, this one it will also give you coins, uh, not that many actually, it's just one coin per mech, but the thing is it will let you build a powerhouse for free. And along with this other one, which won't give you any coin, but just points and a base in the planes, they are just very good because they will let you easily build four structures on the first round which can be pretty, pretty, pretty important. And both of them will let you double up on structures. Like with this one, you can get two powerhouses, which is not great for the income, but it can be great if there are some good contracts out. Like if there, if there is a five energy contract, that's very good. Like the two gray max and three coins or the two brown max and four points or the extra powerhouse uh, contract, for example. Um, this one can be amazingly good just because doubling up on powerhouses can let you produce from a level two contract, from a level two uh, conduit easily to fulfill these kind of contracts. And this one is just, I would say all around very good, but, but that's pretty important. You need a plan 
to get back these two greys um, sooner rather than later. Like, being behind two grey max can really cripple your economy overall. Um, so you better have a plan for this base. You always, always, always want to double up on bases when you go with this contract, in my opinion. So you always want to take this external work and then uh, place down another uh, base. This is very good with France, for example, because with France you're going to get back these two greys basically immediately by the second round, thanks to the income, you're going to get them both back. And generally speaking, this one is just very good, again, to maybe even unlock two different incomes on the first round. Like if you, uh, I don't know, it's, it's not that easy, but you, you, you can cobble up some very good plans with this one. It's another one that I think it's a bit underrated right now because it's very costly. Sometimes I see people taking it and not using it well enough because, again, you need a plan to get back these two. I'm just focusing too much on this one, but uh, this one is very good. This other one can be very strong, but the thing is that most of the time, if you're playing against expert players, this one is just going to be taken by the fourth player. The fourth player will always get the contract for two coins and one mech, and most of the time they will just take this one to boom, gain five coins, and maybe if they need to, they can convert this brown into a gray thanks to their starting contract. It's very hard to, like, at the beginning when I was playing with um, the Lee Water project and many players were not able to correctly estimate how good the external works were, I was able to get something like the level 2 conduit contract or the base um, in the planes contract and then take these external works and fulfill uh, one of these two, which was incredibly good, just like insanely good. Um, but these days most of the time i just see this con this external work taken by the fourth player uh, to filter a brown into a gray that, that, that's what happens most of the time and it's still a very good use of this one of course it changes a bit if you get one of these on the second round i think that the spin one is actually better on the second round while uh, the tile one is consistently worse uh, on the second round than on the first one the other two can still be good, but this one can be tricky to use if all the plane spots are filled or almost all of them are filled. So be careful with it. So that's a lot to say about the level ones, uh, the level A um, external works. The level B contracts are a bit trickier. Um, they cost a lot. So while you can include most of the A ones into any of your plans, like they can cost one max, sometimes two. It's easy to incorporate them into your plan. These will cost three or four max, which is a very high price to pay for. So you need, again, a good plan, unless you're Nestle, of course. You need a good plan to use them. But two of them stand out because they are just amazing. Both the level four conduit and the double um, elevation ones are incredibly good for their own reasons. Uh, well, they will let you build more, which is basically always, always good in Barrage. Building more is always good. It's very hard to get back the max after you commit to the double elevation, for example. But normally, when you, like, what do you need these greys for? Sometimes for uh, powerhouses, but sometimes you can play with only, like, two powerhouses for the whole game. Uh, so, like, you can freely give up these four to get a very, very strong boost to your overall economy and to your um, scoring potential too, because two elevations, this, this external work is very good because normally you can place the two elevations on the mountains, saving you not only two actions, but probably for a, a bigger capacity of grays. So this one is just amazingly good to help you out with uh, getting enough to fulfill a national contract most of the time. And this one is also very good because it will let you build a base in the mountains or in the hills and immediately get a conduit since it requires grays instead of browns so you can go uh, easily for this one along with the base in a good position so both of these are very good um, these two the production ones can be actually very good in some games um, in which you don't have a strong plan to produce for example on round three or you need a bit of a bump to your little production on round four or even on round three. 
and you get extra max for some reason or maybe you got as we're gonna see a loan agency so they can be good because sometimes you're not in a position to produce yet but you would really like to produce because on the third round if you're not going to produce you were probably going to lose if you didn't produce on round one or two so these two can be good it's just that they are not good most of the time um, most of the time it's a bit tactical if you can use them or not so for these two you need a strategy to prepare for them and then to be able to recover the grace you spent for these two sometimes you don't need a big overall plan and sometimes you will find yourself in a good position to use it this one is better in my opinion because normally you don't need this kind of action on the fourth round and on the third one it's still better to get coins than to get points and fulfilling a contract with this one is very 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 good a lot of the six energy contracts can be amazing like a free dam in the hills or three spins and a drop something things like that are are really good so these two can be good but not always this one is like the cinderella of all the works it's very expensive uh, for uh, browns it doesn't give you a big boost to your economy it just give you a few things like four points okay ish two drops two spins like to use this one you either need loan agency which significantly lowers the barrier to pass to make the external works worth it and you need to use the second half of it at its fullest like you really need these two drops to fall into your lap and you need to use these two spins at their best so it's very hard to find yourself um, in the position to be able to use this one at its fullest which makes it too expensive in most games and the C group uh, can basically be summed up to uh, points points point points okay there, there are like um, there's a lot of difference between them one another but they are just ways to convert your extra max into points they are all worth it on the fifth round in my opinion and they can be worth it already on the fourth one depending on uh, which plan you're going for uh, there are some like really small combos like you can take this one to prepare for uh, this one which scores a lot this one is a bit tricky to use because the three spins are hard to justify when you're using up six max so it's not always the best this one is the best score in the game this one can make up for nasty double production fourth or fifth round and this one can give you heaps of points thanks to good contracts in the late game like 12 points or so so this one can also be pretty good i would say that sums up uh, the external works remember that in general the a group will get you more coins or can be seen as a way to give up long-term potential to gain immediate benefits that you need to snowball to get back and more the late game potential you sacrifice for them this one some of them are incredibly good uh, but it's still you're still giving up some late game potential so be careful uh, what you're doing with them and this one they just they're just ways to get points in the late game without needing production so i would say that's it uh, it's not really interesting to discuss a lot about the c group there's something to discuss about but not too much let's discuss about the private buildings well again first off private buildings mm, not great they're not that good uh, maybe i can make it a bit larger to mm. maybe this is going to be too big yeah this is definitely too big um let's just keep it this way hopefully um let's see uh, it doesn't work um so most of them are totally useless but we have to discuss why is that so a private building by itself by its nature has a lot of limits to it so you need to build so you need to use one of your three actions six workers that probably you're gonna use almost every round to build to build one of these you're not committing to the board so you're not helping your overall producing structure you're not unlocking income this is actually very 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 relevant and even if you get one somebody else can build it and it might not be that private after all so a lot of problems to them uh, they give you some uh, end game points but I mean 
for the first half of the game you don't really care about them. So we can say that a lot of the cheap ones are basically uh, useless, cover them, pretty much useless. Development office is only good with combos. It's only good with like base three tile, wild three tiles and a few other tiles. Otherwise this building doesn't do much. Research lab is also not worth it. I mean, you can get back max in the future, but it's just better to save up a build action and save up these max than to build this building in like 90% of the cases. The two ones that give you energy are too costly for what they do. You don't really need that few energy in most games. And in the early game, you want to commit to the board to unlock income. So spending eight max in total or five max in total uh, for these two buildings is not worth it. Uh, financial division can be decent in very specific case where you can secure um, the three spins. Otherwise it's not just me, it's pretty bad. And control station can be good in the late game, uh, especially if it's going to get you national contracts you couldn't otherwise get. Custom office sucks on 90% of the games, sometimes can be good. So the only ones that are consistently good are Robot Factory, uh, which can give you two mechs for only one coin uh, in the early game. It can be pretty good. It's a good combo with the external work that will let you uh, get a gray. If you're in the fourth position, then you can get Robot Factory for easy. Otherwise, five grays is a bit hard to get. And loan agency. Loan agency is just bonkers. Loan agency, uh, it means that you can get external works paying two coins per mech you're not paying, and it requires only one worker. This building is pretty much always built on the first round by somebody, and how often enough it's heavily contested, like more players are going to go for it, especially if among the round bonuses, there's the bonus about um, external works. That's mostly it, but I would like to discuss a bit more about the round bonuses, of course. So two new ones, the one for external works, uh, which gives you five points per external work you get, and the one about private buildings, which give you four points per private building. So what happens in most games is that the private buildings get, you, you can forget about it, get ignored by everybody, even if it's on the fourth or the fifth round. Uh, the effort required to build a lot of uh, private buildings and then to be able to have a production structure to score it well makes it so that it's unfeasible most of the time. I played some very specific game in which I was able uh, to go for a lot of private buildings to score a late game bonus for them, but I would say that again in 90% of the game you can just forget about that bonus unfortunately. Um, while the external building, the external works one is very important and it means that people will fight for external works even more. If Leslie in the, is in the game with this tile on one of the last two spots, Leslie will get beat for like 20, 25, 30 points, something like that. She's going to be that good. I would say that most of the time most players will score a three or four external works for this one if it's on the fifth round and two or three if it's on uh, the fourth round. But remember that like in this game I'm playing, for example, you're gonna score for tiles and external works, which means you can invest a bit less in infrastructure overall. So you need to be careful and to know what you're going for. Like with this bonus tile in the late game, you have to find ways to get max and you care a bit less about building up a good structure. Uh, or a score uh, thanks to your um, buildings. I think you can get away with just one line unlocked and a good production infrastructure. All right, well, I would say that this is pretty much it. Uh, no, I have to discuss real quick about the private buildings um, advanced tiles. The level one will let you build a building and immediately use it. It sounds very good, but it's not very good because again, private buildings most of the time suck. And the ones you can use it for actually require coins like Robot Factory and the aforementioned loan agency. So getting that tile is actually not great for going for them early on. So uh, I would say that the level one building tile 
is most of the time not good. There are some very wonky plans you can pull off every now and then, but most of the time, no, no, no. Um, the level two one is the only one that I can actually call good, just because it going, it's going to give you lots of points for not much effort. Look at Robo Factory, you can build it for one brown mech and gain five points and gain a good ability, for example. So the level two, what, what it does is it will let you spend only one half of the max required, either the browns or the grays. So again, you can be like the energy relay field for only one gray or the robot factory for just one brown. That one is legitimately good. And the last one is the level three. The level three tile simply gives you immediately the points that you're also going to get at the end of game when you build a private buildings. That one is decent because sometimes you need a way to score and you're already maxed out on other things like you're already maxed out on um, production, you already got all the contracts you needed and you need another way to score, but most of the time it's, it's not that good. I would say that that's all I have to say about the expansion, but let me know if you want me to discuss more in detail about some elements of it. I'm for sure going to discuss about the Netherlands in another video, but I might discuss about... Um, other parts of the Lee Water expansion in the future. That's all for the guide about the Lee Water project expansion of Mirage. And see you next time. Mario's out. Bye bye.